Now in the next question, that is question 101, which is based on potentiometer, uh, straightforward question. A potentiometer wire is 100 centimeter long, normally it happens to be, and a constant potential difference is maintained across it. Now two cells are connected in series, first to support one another and then in opposite direction. So you have to find out the ratio of those EMFs. You know that uh, EMF is proportional to length. So in the beginning, if it is supporting, that means E1 plus E2 is given to you. And later on, in case they are opposing, that means E1 minus E2 will be given to you. So they are saying that the balance points are obtained at 50 centimeter and 10 centimeter from the positive end of the wire in the two cases. That means E1 plus E2 is proportional to 50 and E1 minus E2 is proportional to 10. So if you divide them, you can replace this proportionality sign with equality sign. So this is what is given to you in the question and they are asking you to get the value of E1 by E2. Very much obvious, you can cross multiply, you will get the value 3 upon 2. So I will be mar marking answer 1 for this particular question 101. Now let us look at next question that is question 102. Now in this uh, next question that is uh, question 102 which is based on Doppler's effect. It says that a siren emitting a sound of frequency 800 hertz moves away from an observer. So let us suppose you have an observer here somewhere here. This is the observer let us suppose. The source is moving away from it. So source is moving this side and the cliff is here. You understand cliff is here. You can call it the listener. This is the listener. So whatever source is producing, this is going hitting the cliff and it is coming back. Now whatever it will receive, the listener will receive, same frequency will be reverted and that is the frequency that will be heard by this observer. So it says that a siren emitting a sound of frequency 800 hertz, this is 800, moves away from an observer, this is observer, towards a cliff at a speed of 15 meter per second. So here velocity of source has been given 15 meter per second. But since it is moving towards the listener, so it will be taken negative, remember. So now you have to find out uh, the frequency of sound that the observer hears in the echo reflected from the cliff. That means whatever frequency is heard by the listener, that you have to calculate. So frequency heard by the listener is equal to frequency of the source. Frequency of the source has been given as 800 into C plus velocity of listener. Listener is stationary. C is given to you 330 upon this is C plus VL upon C plus VS but instead of VS you are taking as minus 15 because source is moving towards the listener isn't it so if you calculate you will be getting it as approximately 838 Hertz so for that matter we will be marking the answer 4 for this question 102 now let us look at next question that is question 103 In this uh, next question, that is question 103, which is based on logic gates, it says that to get output 1 for the following circuit, the correct choice for the input is, here you have an OR gate and this is an AND gate and the choices are as follows. So in this particular question, you have to, you see, uh, go by the options. You can always substitute options one by one. This is a very simple question in the sense that, you see, if you want 1 here and this is AND gates, so naturally both the input should be 1. So natural thing is that the value of C must be 1 and this is only one option which is having C as 1. So I will be marking answer 1 for this particular question. So very simple. Now let us switch over to next question that is question 104. Now in this uh, question 104 which is based on diffraction at single slit, this is again a straightforward formula based question. It says that in a diffraction pattern due to a single slit of width A, the first minimum is observed at an angle of 30 degree. So you see what is the expression you will be writing? A sin 30 degree is equal to lambda. This is for first minimum. Value of lambda has been given 5000 angstrom is incident on the slit. Now the first secondary maxima. Now what is the expression for secondary maxima? So this is A sin theta is equal to this time 3 lambda by 2. This is the expression you will be using for first maxima, secondary maxima, which you say. The first secondary maxima is observed at an angle of. So simply you have these two equations. 
you divide and get the value of theta. Theta is sin inverse 3 by 4. So for that matter, I will be marking answer 1 for this question 104. Now let us look at next question, question 105. Now this uh, question 105 is based on photoelectric effect. The photoelectric equation directly you have to use. It says that when a metallic surface is illuminated with radiation of wavelength lambda. So you can have the equation HC by lambda. This is equal to the stopping potential is given to you. And they are asking you to calculate the threshold wavelength. So I am writing it as HC by lambda naught plus electronic charge into stopping potential. In the first case, the stopping potential is V. It has been given to you. Now it says that if the same surface is illuminated with radiation of wavelength 2 lambda, so this time the wavelength has been increased, the stopping potential will be reduced, this will remain same at C by lambda naught plus this time the stopping potential you can see it has been reduced EV by 4, right. So you can shift it this side and divide, you can solve these two simultaneously to get the value of lambda naught. So if you solve lambda naught will be coming out to be equal to 3 lambda. So, for that matter, I will be marking answer 1 for this question 105. Now, let us switch over to next question that is question 106. Now, this uh, question 106 is uh, based on Rutherford experiment. Here, uh, distance of closest approach and its proportionality to mass has been demanded. It says that when an alpha particle of mass m moving with velocity v bombards a heavy nucleus. So alpha particle happens to have this kinetic energy half mv square and that gets completely converted into electrostatic potential energy. So it is bombarding a nucleus of charge ZE. So let us suppose the potential energy expression is to be taken. It will be q1 q2 by 4 pi epsilon naught r, isn't it? So q1 if I take off alpha I am writing as 2e and the q2 that of nucleus it is ZE upon 4 pi epsilon naught r naught. r naught is the closest distance of approach. So you can clearly see this closest distance of approach will become directly proportional to what? This is 1 by m. So this is what is demanded. Its distance of closest approach that is r naught from the nucleus depends on m as mass as. So this will be 1 by m. I will be marking answer 2 for this question 106. Now let us look at next question that is 107. 